I've been here before. I wasn't in a good space. Growing up in Eswatini with the highest HIV prevalence in the world. And I, being a beautiful young woman, was a tech too much to take at times. This tree once represented hope. We'd meet here with girls around my age and have sessions on many topics around how to behave and also especially in relation to issues around HIV prevention. I am just thankful that each time I'd close my eyes and hope for better, better was being cooked some way. My name is Nosy Postora and I am the country director and chief of party for PACT in Eswatini. We're implementing the NCI Aksasa project and that's a community-based project. It's a follow-on from the Umli Ebalo and Bili project. Uh, NCI has got expanded scopes. We do clinical services, we do COVID, we do captive. Um, and we've been implementing the NCI project for five years. This is our final year. So PACT's core mandate um, as an organization that, that is present in the whole world their global mandate is to build local promise. So the philosophy is that if your life has been touched by PACT, it shouldn't be the same. In this particular project, PACT's mandate is to support capacity development, and that speaks to community-based organizations. Um, PACT's mandate is that they grow and they expand and they reach new horizons and they open up doors of new possibilities um, in the USAID space, but also in the space of other global donors. Um, PACT is also uh, supporting OVCs, orphans and vulnerable children in the country. Um, so in this project, we're seeing over 40,000 OVCs every month in terms of touching an OVC with a meaningful service. That includes uh, supporting them with school, supporting them clinically, supporting them at household level, supporting their parents with liter literacy around economic strengthening, um, positive parenting communication. It's a very broad and comprehensive program that we offer for OVC. Um, we also um, implement a DREAMS program. So for people who are outside of the USAID space, DREAMS speaks to the support support that you give an adolescent girl or a young woman in Eswatini to enable her to be determined, to be resilient, to be empowered, to be AIDS-free, mentored and safe. That's where the acronym comes from. Um, another core mandate of PACT has been around COVID. So when COVID hit the country, there were a lot of people who we had made a lot of gains with um, as implementers in a community space in terms of resilience building and reduction of vulnerability. And that was all threatened when COVID came. You know, you don't, you don't want a global pandemic to basically destroy all the efforts that you've made over the years. And so our gains were, were very, very, very badly threatened. Um, and what Pat's role became was to educate on COVID and to get jabs and arms through the COVID intervention. So that's PACT's core mandate and why we're here. But uh, fundamentally, as I said before, it's around, you know, if you're a PACT employee and you meet somebody in a community, that person has to be better off for it. So there's no redundancy, there's no fluff, it's meaningfully engaging and meaningfully empowering communities, meaningly building, meaningfully building a promise for better outcomes for, for people in communities who face very unique vulnerabilities. And then working with partners is also something that PACT feels is an element of building local promise because we recognize that we cannot do this on our own. So there are a lot of people in Eswatini who need the services that we all provide as partners. Everybody has a particular niche and the contribution they make is incredibly valuable. But we need to tap into each other's niches so that we can give an impactful service and you know, do due diligence to the people in this nation because they deserve it. So for me, I feel that when we look into what partners can do, that is where we need to tap into how can we leverage. We're stronger together than we are by ourselves. It's a feeling of gratitude, I feel. One way or the other, it's overwhelming. Looking at the obstacles along my path, the thought of where I could have ended up. Looking back to the hard work done by many to have an overall positive social impact. Grateful. Yes, that is the word. I am grateful. So NCGA Accessor Project has really been one of the most, um, should I say, performing projects I've worked in. 
Um, particularly, we have four pillars that we have been um, tracking from the SI perspective, and one of those is um, uh, OVC services um, to our beneficiaries. We also have DREAMS um, services targeting adolescent girls and young women aged um, 10 to 29. And we are also providing um, support to IPs through the capacity development pillar. And finally, we have the COVID pillar, uh, particularly in the OVC um, pillar. NSIGA has um, shown that um, we've enrolled over the five years above 100,000 beneficiaries. And um, in each of um, those five, uh, five years, on average, we had about 45,000 beneficiaries who will include caregivers. On average, we have 10,000 uh, 10, um, caregivers. And we also, in terms of dreams, we have um, surpassed um, most of our um, annual targets, primarily with regards to uh, providing HIV prevention sessions to our adolescent girls and young women. However, in terms of DREAMS completion, the package for um, DREAMS completion, we've been able to uh, complete from the enrolled numbers who would be on average about 30,000 each year. We have been able to complete about 50% of those in terms of finishing the primary core package for DREAMS. We have also been successful in the COVID um, efforts for uh, vaccinations under INSIGA, and particularly we have vaccinated over 100,000 uh, people across the 59 constituencies as a project, and this has been recognized also and acknowledged uh, nationally by the Minister of Health as one of the partners of a significant contributor to vaccination. So in terms of um, how the, in, the INSIGA pillars have performed, specifically now looking into specific interventions under OVC, for instance, um, over the five years, INSIGA has managed to um, provide education support um, to over 90% of all eligible beneficiaries, and this include those who have received direct support through the school block grants, um, allowing many of our uh, beneficiaries to access education without having to pay for the school fees which the uh, project has paid for. Also, um, we have been targeting primarily the caregivers for all our enrolled households to ensure that they can be economically um, sustainable and be able to be empowered to provide for their um, children. And specifically in that area, the project has ensured that um, they create savings and lending groups which um, are very instrumental in providing support for the families. Um, I think in the over five years of the project, uh, there's been over 1,000 savings and lending groups for caregivers. Within that, you have um, profitability of over um, 3 million in Malangeni. However, we also have seen that within the project work also over 10 million in Malangeni has been um, saved to get collectively by these groups, which has actually impacted the ES outcomes, education outcomes, particularly as we look at how many of our um, of our beneficiaries or caregivers are able to now pay for the basic needs of their um, children um, post uh, uh, the work of the project groups are able to pay for education, are able to pay for um, 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 for health care for their children, which therefore is part of the milestones that we look for when we graduate families from the project. The story of Young Heroes becoming a USAID Prime or local partner is is very interesting. Uh, with with Young Heroes, it actually started uh, when we launched in 2006, where we were only just offering uh, food and clothing uh, grants. We we registered as Young Heroes as a separate entity in the year 2014. So we started being a a a, a, a packed partner, which was in kind. We would do all the paperwork that was required and then ask PECT to pay for us. <laughs> um, and then we, 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 because of the assessment, we learned of what things we needed to put in place in order to become a fully fleshed uh, sub. In 2017, we were then awarded the full status of a, a, an implementing partner. We learned of various gaps uh, which Young Heroes as an organization still had to uh, work on. Uh, we, had, we had the ITOCA assessments, uh, 
And then from there, we developed uh, institutional strengthening plans, uh, which we followed regularly to ensure that we, uh, we improve our systems. And there was, there was uh, of course, huge support from the PEC team in terms of following up and even giving us the direction of what things would need to work on for us to attain whatever goals that we had set in the Institutional Strengthening Plan. We, we became the, the, the prime in 2020. Uh, we continued to attend um, trainings done by uh, uh, USAID. I do recall we attended and also the local partners meetings with USAID. I guess that is the reason why we even now we still stand as a local partner now to take on the bigger tasks of not only working in five Dingunla in the country, but now in more than 20 Dingunla in the country. The thing is, I wasn't the only one who benefited from this project. We were many, and it's all in the eyes of those that share my gratitude. Ngacho ina insiga yakusasa ngangu mundo lo esababa nvu ngati koko tigmele ngende njani cause I was in an abusive relationship. Ngilangi <laughs> EGPV agmeli wesabe loguba open uba kotele bo makelewa ne bako kukutuwe nuslugu bete gili. Ok, safunza, wangfunzi sana yegwe kutu mapilisi anataka njani, utinaka njanjo umundu lo, umundu lo mngane. Ati umangkweta kufunza nge tembilo kusispatol sile kwa weta suzama wangfunzi sana nge te biznis. Ngana kwa nangafunza lo kuni nkozi Namutla, Nyakonile Vula, Lenya, a business sector, and Sangakona went there in Margate. Nanga Bengala Pagute, my customer, Eguasha, Nyakona Guvuli, Margating Tengis. Sangakona go save and my profits in Conil and a grantor in Zungagabandra Bam, but Sangale Labakunao. In Sigayagusasa, Bang providing a starter pack. Glass starter pack, Wagner washing machine, Une iron board. Le washing machine ni yole le ngisita kukuti ngwashe le banfu. Nga kona gegu washa, nga tinese nkona lo kufula le sospaza. Lo kusho kukuti ngiafisa kukuti le biznisi ya miyegu washa. Ikubege, ikule, kube ibiznisi le yati wa banfu la banin la swatin. Mkule aronde machi tanche na melo kshini. Skula senda tindu sa tikanza. Sezi tinese ngene sengenela imikibo imikibale mibi sesiganga senda nalo kwa lokwa nalo kwa kwakhulu akuba i habit lendo kangoba bese in control ati thola back in 2017 enda form 1 a hill site in Boshiwe ngebe pa kwemthwana esikolwa lobe kanda form 5 as centuries aboshwa nganikwa one year enkantolo ngayivula masango my phones are from 2017 up until 2021, but since I'm now cheating, I'm being like 2018. I'm feeling sick with both sides. I'm from three. I'm passing out fully married. Baby, okay, I'm party. Hey, I'm actually going to see one neglect in a way. What the faults are? The pattern, the cool face, the time I let accumulate. Apume ma resulti. Kwa zingi pasi le infect. Bego le bego le kwenye na nothing vile na na times. Cause I got four eight stars. A mwenye na three wabo pi kupe. So basha le baga swaka, then baga swaka. Wana batinza ni nebe nsi gayaksa. Nabo na labo bo August, August September 2022. So le ma resulti sisi kolwe. Ba mvula ba ni bunifu na yambangena. Both are seats. Upsung, selling a move. 
zingo shai follow up lega swa kaka manzi bank chelo guti no abo paymenti ba be approved no bonging course na 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 play la guado sena play na se Taiwan e kunshan fit pe kibati no basi bas state in fact basi sixteen out of eight hundred no funse la mechanical engineering konalena for a period of four years. Tinatalanga <laughs> We are going to sit and sweat the abona logo guti in a shisaga long nengutale lo ye business. Me bang tengela litange e e bofeni si la bang six tiko toleting seventeen ni alonge senga lile ni ni abia le 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 fit lotiam tengile ni alogo zaguato le timbuti. My biggest aim, no my biggest goal, when Lula Guleti Mbuti Tenyama, a very big project here at Mbuti Telbis. I came here in 2019. When I came here, the situation was so bad, bad, in the real sense. You'll find that you have got some animals moving around. No fence. The children will pay the amount they will afford, not, not minding that you are supposed to pay other things, but at the end of it all, that's what they had. The state of vulnerability was so worse and bad, and it was so much. You, you could see that everyone here can, cannot afford to have school. And then you, you come in into that situation. But there was a handover whereby I was told that there is a, an organization called VUV. It had come to the rescue of the school by supplying the school with an amount of about 244,000. With that money, we made sure that we make sure that there are some resources internally. We were able to buy a, a freezer from the school. We were able to buy some, uh, some gadgets for the students who were doing computer because they couldn't, the, the computers couldn't communicate to one another. They gave us a grant, what we call a block grant, whereby they took 20 girls for three years. And then when you calculate the school fees, you found that the amount was about 244. And then from that amount, we had to split it to fencing the school, buying school resources, and making life much easier for the students. We get the second grant, but this time it was restricted because the company had to come to an end. At some point, well, then this time the company said, no, let's try 10 instead of the 20 girls. So after calculation, again, we had an amount of about 57,000. Mind you, now it's a school. It's fenced, some resources in the TD, some resources wherever. So this time, our concentration was, what's the priority? We're able to help students, which are about 105 or so. But this time, the organization said, no. Let's improve the grant from the 1.52 to 2,000. So both boys and girls managed to access that funding. We appreciate and we are grateful to the organization for whatever they have done. And we wish we could have such school grants. If I could have maybe next year another school grant, perhaps somewhere coming back, just for 30 students, I know that with 30 multiplied by this, you'll get a big amount so that we have more and more resources. I now get a chance to celebrate the future. See, I have lived to see the pillars meant for sustaining tomorrow, actually sustaining it. I started off with a lot of vulnerabilities. I had the opportunity to grow in the Insiga Accessor project. I was a beneficiary, from being a beneficiary, I went to being a life mentor, and now I am a DREAMS coordinator at PACT. 
I now have an opportunity to work closer with young girls and I have an ever-growing platform to reach out with positive messages to young women and adolescent girls in the kingdom of Eswatini. So the question is, is it tomorrow? Perhaps not, but the steps taken to get there are all there for everyone to see. Niti in Sigayak Sasa.